The hordes of Mordor and Moria have come to defeat the Gondorians as they hold up inside their fortresses, defending the peasants and people who live around this area. Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome to an epic online battle as we dive straight back into Rise of Mordor. This one is going to be one hell of a battle. You can see it is over an hour long, so make sure you get your snacks, as Apollo would say. Sit down and get ready to enjoy one hell of an engagement. We are using the sub mod as well, so we've got the faction of Moria here as well, the heavy goblin infantry ready to overrun the Gondorian positions as they try and keep this fortress alive. This is also, I'll go ahead and stick it on play as well as the battle does kick off because it is quite a long one. Um, this is a brand new map as well that is currently unreleased, so this one isn't out for the public to play quite yet. Um, and it's really, really cool. It kind of gives me the Castle Hill vibes, which is such a great map. You kind of got this really intense uh, village where you you know, soldiers can kind of fight down every single avenue through all of these streets and it's really exciting I and mean, obviously you have a very kind of condensed fortress up on the hill ready to defend as best as you can but right now the city is being hammered with artillery and yeah it's going to cause a lot of issues for the defenders as they just try and quickly re-maneuver I mean look at this the Gondorians are fleeing uh, trying to you know get into a decent position flee for your lives that's awesome. And this battle is absolutely massive as well. We have close to just under 20,000 soldiers. So another huge engagement for you guys. It's going to be really, really exciting. And yeah, I'm definitely starting to get into more of these longer siege battles now. When they do kind of, you know, consist of this huge, huge scale. It becomes really, really exciting. And oh my god, that one Uruk just got absolutely plowed by the tower which is currently being shot and focused down by the Uruk scouts right now so yeah we do have Isengard I think I actually said these guys were Mordor at the beginning of the battle but no we have Isengard over on the right hand side obviously cladded with elite pikemen and infantry the Isengard soldiers never get uh, never get bored. I love as well their like fists as well on their, their gauntlets so they can just like punch people. It looks really, really cool. We've obviously got some more of these, you know, just medium tier Isengard infantry. And then obviously the elite ones back here, which are going to kind of be committed a lot more towards the end of a battle, I would say. Then over on the far left hand side for Moria, you guys have seen Moria a few times, but you know, for the most part they have these really kind of, you know, standardized goblin heavy warriors. These guys are going to kind of be their main meat of their army. They have more of a shock unit right here as well, these awesome looking goblin infantry with like these huge... Uh, great swords, I guess, when they dive into battle, they'll do a lot of damage as well. And I really love the uh, sword grip on these. It kind of goes around their arm. You can't really see it too well there. You can see it a bit better there, um, allowing them to kind of, like, again, use it more as, like, a hitting weapon than anything else. Uh, then for the most of the rest of their force, more goblin heavy infantry. You've got goblin people on the artillery. Uh, kind of more goblin heavy infantry, more of the warmongers, and I imagine we just have, like, a bunch of these goblin archers back here as well. Again, you guys can see them right there in their armor. So they're chilling, ready to push on. Also, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but take a look at the balance of power right now. It is heavily uh, in favor of the attackers, which is going to be pretty interesting to see how that does go down. We do actually have a bit of a cavalry engagement out here as the Dalian horsemen charge out and cause pretty big mayhem in this engagement, taking down a lot of these Uruk archers. And they haven't really lost a single horse yet, only losing two and outputting a lot of damage. I mean, how many kills have these guys on already? 250, and it seems like they're out for, for blood. One of the things that the evil factions don't really have at the moment is a decent cavalry force. They don't have wargs, they don't have like trolls which can be used to take out horses. Um, so really kind of the good factions have a very nice uh, you know, advantage when it comes to mounted combat as they come flying and again causing a lot of damage on the not unbraced uh, Urukai infantry and then they're immediately going to go flying, make safe the city. Diving back in to hit these Isengard units in the rear as they're fighting the rest of the Dalian shipmen as they bravely fight on and try and hold this position against the Urukai as they continue to move on. And now they're going after these archers. Oh my god, this cavalry is just playing for itself so much right now. So many kills, a volley going off on them, but the cavalry is going to come flying in and get us a rip through the Urukai. This is catastrophic for them. This unit is just proving its worth right now. Really, really uh, effective 
right there on the charge. And they're going to charge immediately. Kind of just like ping pong their way back. I mean, they're going to go down, but already up to 400 kills. Another volley coming in there. I think that's going to be the end of it. No, we're going to get one last cavalry charge off. As their numbers do start to go down, though, their effectiveness also suffers. The arrows are going to, you know, find their mark on their mounted targets. Bit of friendly fire maybe going out here, but finally that unit of horse has been taken care of. I mean, that was brutal. Really, really was. Over on the main battle lines now, you can see the shipman and town watch of Dale trying to hold the line against the heavily armoured Urukai. They were not giving them a moment's peace. They're going to be putting up a pressure. And they also obviously have so many more men coming up. They've even got some pikemen now pushing their way forward. These pikes are obviously going to be a great target for the Dalian archers. But the problem is, in a battle like this, it's like, do the Dale want to waste their ammunition on killing pikemen this early on? Like, normally you want to try and save as much ammo as you can towards the end of the battle. But obviously killing pikes is going to be very important. And I believe Isengard have brought a handful of them to this battle. However, Gondorian's faring, are they faring any better? And also, who's commanding this center? So this is kind of like a mix in the center. You've got some of the infantry of Gondor, supported by the pikemen of Dale. But yeah, they are getting hammered by the artillery fire. And that's probably going to cause the pikemen to fall back. You've got some Gondorian archers here set up. And on the far right hand side as the Muria Orcs continue to put pressure on them. They actually managed to break a unit of Gondor militia. And now the awful goblins are charging forward. I think this is like one of the... No, Goblin Raiders. Okay, I think the Goblin Raiders are the worst unit in the game. But there's a Goblin unit. Maybe it's called Goblin Rabble. Or it's something. It just sucks. It really it kills like two men. And they have like a hundred, They have like 250 goblins in the unit. They're just awful. Well, that's like the definition of that bit from the Hobbit movie when there's like, oh, just a couple of goblin mercenaries will be fighting. There's like two of them. It's like, are they really that bad? I can't imagine it, you know? I'm sure if you give 250 toddlers a knife, they'll eventually take you down. But maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd actually be interested. Do you think 200 toddlers with knives would be able to take you down? I mean, I guess not, right? But I would assume goblin power, you know, on the power scaling, toddlers are probably, you know, goblins are much stronger than a, than a toddler. Anyway, though, back to the battle we at hand. We can see the goblins are throwing forward a lot of their weaker units first, just trying to soften up the defense and tire out the Gondorians, which is obviously always a good idea. They definitely have the numbers, uh, you know, with over a 4,000 orc slash goblin slash urukai advantage. They can really use these numbers and their missiles to push forward. They want to kind of try and absorb as much ammunition as they can uh, before putting forward more of their elite infantry that will be making the breaches possible. And it does seem like Isengard are really pushing uh, quite heavily right now. And it's, yeah, they've almost broken through this, this Dalian outpost right here. You can see some Dale infantry using the streets to their advantage as the Lake Town Guard move forward to try and hit the pikemen in the side. And that's one of the reasons I love maps like this, where you can utilize each of these, you know, each of these paths very effectively. You've got some artillery coming in. That's a friendly hit of artillery. Very, very short. A lot of missile fire as well. Pounding away this Lake Town Guard as they charge in to the pikemen. Also, that, also that friendly artillery has hit like four, of, uh, four shots on their own units, which really isn't good. They maybe need to try and range out. They are exchanging missiles, though. Whilst this unit of archers is focusing down the Lake Town Guard, they're obviously taking a pounding from the, uh, from the archers of Gondor right now, as well as the rangers from Dale. I mean, realistically as well, the main defense of this settlement is going to be this outer castle or this inner castle, right? The streets themselves are more of just a delay, you know, factor. Or with some cavalry charging through here as well. Is this Gondorian cavalry going to try and break through? I think they are. Even though against, you know, goblin heavy infantry, it seems like they're going to be able to just pull out of this quite useful, uh, quite easily. And then, again, obviously put some pressure onto the archers. They've really effectively taken out the archers of their opponents. Which is pretty, you know, a pretty good thing to do. Because these archers can just cause so much havoc. Especially when you get in towards the inner castle and the walls themselves. 
And the Goblin Archers right here. These guys are extremely light. So they are going to break and just get thrown away. So this cavalry has been, you know, pretty pretty bad for the attackers right now. And honestly, there's no reason not to have your, your entire army a bit further forward so you can counter stuff like this. Like, granted, obviously, it's just extremely unfortunate that the evil factions don't really have... Uh, don't really have like a fast moving unit for themselves such as trolls or such as uh, wargs or you know maybe even just horsemen you know they have like the Haradrian horses and that's literally about it I believe the Easterlings get a couple more like a, a unit of horse or two from the sub mob but obviously if you don't bring them you kind of leave these orcs factions a bit unfortunate you know a bit off of it but I guess yeah, it's just something you have to play around for now um, and Gondor are definitely exploiting that factor. We also have two units of horses back here as well. Are these swan knights or are these just... No, these are just dallying horses waiting to kind of pounce if anything comes across the river. Because you can also attack the settlement from the back as well. You can make your way around and assault this part of the settlement. Which honestly is not a bad idea if that's something you want to do. I believe there's a river crossing on either side or maybe not. Maybe there's only one river crossing and it's around here. You have to cross this and then come all the way around um, to assault. And honestly, you know, it's not a bad idea. Something that would be really, really cool is maybe there was like, uh, you know, I mean, I guess there's rocks here, so you can't really do it. But I was saying what would be cool is like if you moved through this river uh, to get your siege towers up along this wall or something. That would be kind of a cool feature of the map, I think. But as you can see, the Goblin Assault has kind of been worn out. I mean, we've still got an hour left of this replay. And don't worry, guys, if there are any, like, really slow parts to the battle, I will just cut them out. So hopefully, you know, the battle won't be, you know, have any boring bits whatsoever in it. I mean, not they, they generally do. <laughs> Look at the piles as well of Goblins already littering the field. And I imagine by the end of the day, it's going to be, you know, plenty more. As more artillery just comes into the city, bombarding this rear position and getting some perfect hits on the forces of good. Taking down a lot of these skirmishes. And you can see they're getting out of there. Hitting some of this Gondorian sword infantry and everything else that is in the city. And Isengard have just broken through right now. They're going to be pouring in the city. And you can see they're going to be utilizing... All of the streets to their advantage, running through the sides, passages, running through people's gardens, looking just to get around the flank. And this is why I love maps like this so much, because it just opens up. It feels like a city battle, you know? Instead of just having these free lanes, you actually have all these positions. Look at that! Now they're just going to turn around and run through this little street as well to outflank their opponents. This is what Total War Siege maps should be like, you know? And then you've obviously got them countering as well. So it just opens up so many avenues it's so cool we also have the the archers up on the wall as well shooting down even though there's a few trees in the way which i imagine you know would would have been cut down if it was a, a real life siege these guys are in a perfect position right now especially to shoot down these guys right there they can really just hammer them um, and i think that's exactly what their focus is going to be so the forces of evil have broken through the outer defense but now this is kind of where the main fighting will take place because the archers on the walls can really effectively help fight back. But it's going to be very difficult for the defenders to plug every single gap in this settlement. Because obviously infantry can come from any side, especially when they break through this and they open up this like kind of street. You can literally go anywhere. If you take a look at it, you can literally go all the way over here, help out there. You can make your way through this street. You can go through this street. You can go through this street. This one like this. As pretty much the possibilities are endless. More crappy goblins are being thrown into the fray over on the left-hand side. It seems like they're not ready to commit their morally infantry quite yet. And that cavalry also fell back. How many kills did that cavalry end up getting uh, for the Gondorians? Because... Yeah, they barely lost any men and they're on 300 kills. That's disgusting. But again, unless they're going to put like their entire army right next to their archers. I mean, I guess they, all they could have done is they could have committed maybe a unit of pikes or two just to kind of protect them and leave them their pikes pretty vulnerable to missile fire. So, yeah, it's tricky when you don't really have the men. And this unit of town guard or lake town guard right now are just in such a good position. They're literally just acting as bait to shoot as best as they can as more of these Urukai infantry come flying in. But as you can see, the archers up there are just, you know, picking away the Urukai left, right, and center. But 
They really have such a good position there. And that's going to slowly start to rack up the kills. Luckily, the Urukai do have 200 Uruks in their unit, so they kind of have the numbers, but their numbers will start to dwindle if they're not careful. And we do actually get a nice little flanking here. The Warriors of the uh, White Tree moving in, the Great Sword Infantry for Gondor, smashing into the side of these Uruks, and with the support of the Arrow, there is no retreat for them, so the forces of good, even though they are severely outnumbered, are really going into this battle, looking for every single advantage, and you can see the manpower is kind of staying the same, obviously the forces of good are slowly dragging it back, but for the most part, that 5,000 man advantage is staying around, it's like 4,000, what, 700 right now? Which honestly is not that bad. Uh, it seems like, you know, the forces of evil are making good progress as they break through. Trying to get men around every single flank, you know, breaking back these positions. You've got the pikemen as well, quite handedly, helping to break up the spear formation. Nice little outflank there by the... The Urukai as they get smashed by the archer fire. More artillery coming in as well. I assume, yeah, they're trying to try and kill maybe these big blocks of, uh, of Urukai, which are just waiting to be committed to the fight. But their leader is telling them to stay in formation. There we go. We just hit the hour mark right now, so the battle still has a long way to go. And by the way, guys, if you enjoy these longer, kind of more serious siege battles, do let me know in the comments down below, because... Uh, the guys who play a lot of these battles do check out the likes, they do check out the comments and they kind of see what you guys enjoy the most when they're kind of playing battles for replays. So it's always great to see, you know, and if you guys want to see more of these longer replays, they obviously take a lot longer to play, they take a lot longer to record um, and render and upload and stuff like that. But, you know, if, if there's enough love and if there's enough likes, I, you know, I'd be more than happy to do a lot more of these battles in the future. So really is up to you and oh my god one crappy goblin unit runs another one comes flying in this unit of poor spearmen must be exhausted by this point and they are actually only tired they're slowly getting grinded down but the goblin raiders are just flying unit after unit against these pinaf galir uh, spearmen and i feel sorry for them i mean how many more goblin units uh, are going to come flying in until we get the heavies. I mean, come on already. Let's let's go. Let's go. They also have brought up a, a larger portion of their formation. It does seem like this center is kind of getting neglected, and I'm not. All, I'm not like a. I'm not um, anti doing this whatsoever because by really not focusing on the center, you're going to allow like as soon as this breach does happen, you're going to allow the center to kind of get overrun. Whereas breaking through all of these positions in one go, you know, might kind of take out that factor. But if you break through any of these positions and you get up to this part of the wall, then you can really start to utilize that. It does seem like some of the goblins did try to pull through there to get the archers and actually ended up failing. And now a few more infantry are coming up. Some hillmen are going to be committed to this fight now. So some axe infantry just to basically save these archers and protect them a little bit more. It does leave them a little bit vulnerable. And you can see the ranks of goblins sitting there. I, I really honestly can't wait until we do get trolls in the game. Um, the guy who made this map is actually making trolls. Uh, the animations of the trolls. Which is really, really cool. You know, he's learning how to animate and everything. Which is pretty awesome. And yeah, I, I really can't wait to see the trolls in game. Because I think that's going to add a lot more you know, hitting power to the evil factions. It's going to give them the ability to, you know, really cause this huge shock damage. Uh, it'll be, yeah, it'll be awesome when we do get added. The shipmen have been brought up. And I think the shipmen have actually been buffed in, in the more recent patches. I don't think anyone's actually confirmed it or not in, in my videos, but I've said this a few times. Uh, I think the shipmen have become more of a staple of the Dalian infantry rather than kind of the more expensive, more elite, uh, Dale, you know, sword infantry, kind of the ones we, we know and love, you know, more of, uh, where are they? Oh my god, though, saying that, before we talk about them, look at this, we've got a big surround going on right now, as the Gondor sword infantry try and fight their way out. 
but are actually going to find themselves being caught in the middle of the streets. And this is why I love this so much, because stuff like this can happen. However, this unit of Irukai infantry are going to eat every single arrow they have at their disposal. More reinforcements coming. There needs to be like another six, seven units come flying through this. As well as that, they need to kind of maybe send, now that they've pushed back the Gondorians a little bit, they need to send men through this street and go and help out in the center, because that could be huge if they go ahead and finally notice that. Um, they really do need to commit. And they have a decent amount of infantry left. They are starting to run a little bit low. Uh, Isengard are obviously taking the biggest brunt of this assault. But yeah, they're, they're, they need to kind of go in. The goblins have kind of held back a large portion of their force for now. We do also have who's attacking the center of the goblins. Yeah, the goblins have now committed more of their heavier infantry to this fight. With the support of the arrow fire as well, they're managing to repel this. But this would be perfect to, to commit some men around this flank. And that's exactly what they're doing. Or are they sending these, uh, these berserkers just into battle? I think the berserkers are just going into battle. I mean, realistically, you want to keep these berserkers as far away from this wall as possible because as soon as the arrow fire comes flying in, it'd be a perfect opportunity as well to shoot these Gondorian sword infantry in the back as well if they could, if they were wanted to risk bringing up their missiles. If they have, we, they don't really have any left. Wow, yeah, what happened to all their archers? I guess that, that Gondorian missile uh, cavalry charge really messed them up. They could also send this unit of uh, Urukai infantry through these streets and try and hit these guys. But again, the arrow fire is just deadly. Luckily for them, though, some of these archer units are running out of ammunition bit by bit, but there's still a lot more left for them to commit to this fight. You know, you are seeing a lot of these outer archers very low on ammunition. But there we go. They yeah, finally managed to break through this, which will allow them, if they want to, to commit more Uruks to the center part of this battle. They could quite easily, you know, breach through this point and then use the goblins. They obviously have to bring up all their siege towers as well. Because they want to, you know, obviously keep up the pressure. Out of interest as well, can they assault the walls anywhere else? No, this is a fort and a half. They can only really breach the walls along this uh, passage unless they go through the rear, which I don't think they're really planning on doing. So because of that, they're going to be hard pressed to take this settlement. But they're, they're pushing up some good artillery fire coming in. They also have some sappers as well. Yeah, they have to try and use the sappers really effectively. So if you guys don't know, this unit, where are they? Uh, these units right here blow up the walls and kill everything around them, basically. The animation looks a bit silly, but, you know, for the most part, they kind of act like they do in Helm's Deep. So if they were to blow up, like, this part of the wall, it would kill, like, everything in this area. So that's something they should definitely, obviously, they're probably planning on doing as they get further and further towards the settlement. It's kind of like a get out of jail free card for taking this one. The fighting has also been pushed back pretty heavily already, honestly. You know, you can almost see the gate. So the defenders are definitely, uh, you know, holding and fighting for every inch, but the attackers are making progress. And, you know, they are absorbing arrows, which is kind of the most important thing. Another archer volley coming in. Every single one taking down their opponents. How's the balance of power looking right now? I mean, honestly, for the attackers, they're, they're doing good. They've still got a lot of men, you know. It's when you start to get to kind of like this point and then you realize that the attackers have just as many men as the defenders, that's when you have to start to worry. But they've got a huge army. Like, the goblin force is basically intact. At least their more important units are fully intact. And they are committing some of their heavier infantry now to this fight as well. We've got some of the goblin blood reavers going up against the Gondor sword infantry committing themselves to this battle. They are being hit by arrow fire in the side. The Gondorians are using these streets. This is like a Zillioth when he's like, Faramir, get out of the way. Or I can't remember what he says. He's like, Faramir. And then he like hides down the corner and all the arrow fire comes in. That's basically what this is. So it wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah, you can see the goblins are committing more infantry to the front to quickly try and silence this. But... They are being punished for it. Obviously, these axes don't really have great missile defense either. We also have some cavalry. I wonder what the cavalry is going to try and do. I guess maybe try and block these positions. Honestly, it wouldn't be a bad idea as more of the Uruks come round. I think they're forming shield wall to help defend against the cavalry charge. They're just looking to come through the streets. Yeah, they're going to go in for a charge here. 
through the streets. Oh, this is, this is epic. They're actually going to pull back now because the Urukai did form a nice shield wall. That's basically all you need to do against the cavalry charges is brace and form a shield wall. And you can take them out quite handedly uh, without too much issues. And there we go. The center is finally breaking. I mean, I guess kind of at the perfect time. Cavalry is going to come in both for a charge against the heavy goblins. As you can see, they held pretty decently. This, this cavalry unit should take a lot of damage as they try and pull out. Uh, not really, though. Only losing, only losing a couple of horses. Obviously, every horse they do lose is pretty important. This was kind of perfect timing for the defenders. Just as infantry were coming to outflank them, they fell back. We also have more goblins, though, running around here, shooting the streets. I mean, it's going to be absolute mayhem right now um, as the defenders continue to hold and push forward. It's actually kind of crazy looking at how many units the attackers still have left remaining. The defenders are running low on the men, uh, especially for the outer defense, but they obviously have, you know, this entire fort out here, which is going to be so useful for them. And a lot of archers, you know, are running out of ammunition now, and more men are having to be moved in to replace them. Do the attackers have many missiles left? Yeah, the goblins have a handful. However, there is a cavalry charge coming out looking to cause some mayhem on the front lines. Get around the flanks. Cause some issues for them. I mean, obviously, this would be a great target for archer fire, which I think is exactly what these guys are focusing on. A lot of these arrows not really finding their mark, but they lost a couple horses there. I think one or two horses. But yeah, this is it. It's just so difficult to try and take out these these riders because they just don't really have anything to do do it with you know they kind of anything to hold it in place the cavalry can really just cause mayhem um but luckily the goblins are you know holding a very tight ship right now they're not really committing any more men to this fight um until they have to you know they don't want gaps to appear and we finally got some more urukai charging forward breaking against the defenders that does look pretty epic as well seeing the banners the defenders and everything else in this awesome city. Like, this is a really cool map as well. I'm a huge fan of maps like this. Especially with all the arrow fire and, and fire arrows coming out as well. All you need now is some artillery going overhead and that's, that's all you need, honestly. So they're just going to grind away, really. That's going to be their, their main goal, I guess, in this battle, is just to try and grind through the defenders as much as possible. We do have another unit of Gondorian cavalry who are so perfectly set up. I mean, it's obviously quite hard for them to maneuver in these streets, but they're going to come flying in to the back of this Urukai unit. Uh, luckily, they are pretty fresh, and the street should prevent them from really getting a huge wind-up, but that was a very nice charge there. And the, cat, the infantry is going to try and push forward uh, to kind of clump up a bit more. Yeah, I mean, honestly, turning around and trying to kill these horses as they try and pull out is probably their best bet. Because they need to reduce these horses as best as they can. So charging against them is always a good idea. And as you can see, the Gondorians do pay quite heavily. Not having the maneuverability to kind of, you know, use the open field as effectively as they would like. Oh my god, more cavalry here just running down the goblins. The goblins are just going in. These are the goblin stalkers. Two double blades. Just trying to take down as many of these horses as possible. They need to make sure that their sappers are nice and safe. I think they're hidden right now. No, they're not. They need to be very careful if one of their units is hidden. Because if they lose them sappers just as a cavalry charge, that would really, really suck. Another brutal charge off of the infantry. Again, but every single charge, they lose horses. And that's kind of, I guess that's all really Isengard can do. Just to try and reduce their numbers so that they're pretty useless yeah there's just not really much they can do i'm really hoping these sappers are going to be okay the artillery is out of ammunition now so that's fine going back to the rest of the fight as well now we're getting a big push here seems like a lot more goblins moving inside of the city gonna be moving up their archers and it seems like they are protecting their archers this time quite effectively i like the shields as well on the back of these goblins They've kind of got like a mix of like, is there like a dwarven shield on the back? <laughs> kind of looks like it, right? Looks cool. All these archers, I think, are just focusing down as many horses as possible. 
Yeah, there's not really much left for them. So the attack is going to continue with a lot of archer fire, a lot more infantry moving in. Um, but really, you know, this kind of initial assault has kind of run out of steam. And now it's going to have to be reinforcements being poured in, a lot of archer fire, um, and a lot more you know, other action coming in as well. I think the cavalry is basically dealt with, though, which is huge. They still obviously have a unit out here. But yeah, I think now it's going to kind of be a little bit of a low on a battle. So let's jump ahead until I guess the next major assault does happen. Okay, so lots more men have been committed to the fight. Or I should say orcs or goblins, not men. Uh, I mean, the men are committing more and more men, but they are finally starting to get overrun on the front lines. The goblins, you know, now that they're committing a lot more of their heavier infantry after tying out their opponents, are making great ground. And you can really start to see that, you know, showing its, uh, yeah, showing its worth. The Urukai have managed to break through on the several streets. Uh, we're having the center being put under a lot of pressure as more goblins get thrown forward to support the Urukai. The Urukai on the right hand side are struggling, honestly. Um, but, you know, with the Berserker support, they are, you know, making a decent amount of progress as well. Obviously, going to be very vulnerable to the missiles and the cavalry charge running through the infantry. Is going to be able to send them packing and hopefully like kind of take the sting out of their tail because yeah if you can just kind of keep these guys a bit busy then you're going to have a great time of it the right flank is finally breaking because some white hand stormers got committed to the engagement they're going to again quite quickly be committed uh, against a unit of town guard from dale and luckily for them as well, they have huge shields, so a lot of this arrow fight isn't causing as many issues. But once again, the arrows are starting to dwindle. There's not as many units with you know ammunition left. What you have, what one, two, three units of archers with full strength and a couple javelins. That's not a lot, and you can see a balance of power is remaining in the, the side of evil. Even though you know the number wise, it's been kind of brought back down to two thousand uh, unit advantage. Uh, disadvantage. But again, you got to remember. A lot of the uh, men and their numbers comes from archers without ammunition, so unless they're bardings, they don't really fight too well on the front line. And that does tend to kind of, you know, come back and bite them towards the end of the battle, because not only do you start to release more of your elite infantry, you have to start committing archers, which just do not stand too well. And you've got more infantry coming around now. You can see a unit of goblins. A unit of Urukai even from Isengard coming around this side to obviously hit the infantry in the back and, and hopefully try and clear up this defense um, so they can kind of you know continue to push forward. They've brought forward some of their Onaga crew right now as well. Uh, more archers are just flying in. You can see more reinforcements. You've got some goblin spear throwers as well, which are quickly making their way forward. There is a small contingent of uh, of cavalry right there, but the Urukai are ready. I mean, they've kind of cut off their retreat as well. I think that'll be all she wrote for this unit of Gondor horses. But over 600 kills, I mean, that's a very, very impressive kill count. So they've definitely paid for themselves in this battle. But it seems like the, the Alta defense has now basically fallen. The infantry are falling back to the inner positions. They're kind of firing off their last couple artillery rounds. As the battering ram does get put forward, which is kind of cool to see bringing up this and it's always great to see when the players are like proactive about bringing forward soldiers uh, like a little bit sooner than they're needed because it just means they can commit them to the fight there's a lot less downtime in the battle i mean i'm sure again we're probably going to get a couple minutes of downtime the soldiers come forward but it's kind of to be expected um you know when you have such a large scale battle like this you know soldiers are going to have to be committed bit by bit out of interest as well, I'm not sure if any of you guys in the comments can tell me this, but can you destroy these walls? So you can destroy those walls, that's pretty interesting. Um, obviously you wouldn't be able to utilise them, but honestly it might not have been a bad idea to try and destroy like a decent portion of this wall. And just use that so that they couldn't put archers up on top of them. That's actually an interesting strategy, right? Because if you do destroy this entire thing, it stops them from putting archers up here to shoot down at you. They would have to shoot more over instead of straight down. Because as you guys know in Total War, if you shoot straight at the opponent, it does a lot more damage than if you have to shoot over and arc your shot. And this is what I'm saying. Look at this. They're having to now commit more of our archers. I mean, luckily these are barding, so these guys are actually pretty decent in melee combat. They're like the, the best archer unit in the game. They are going up against White Hand Stormers, which can definitely pack a punch. 
of their own. So now the archers are being committed just to kind of keep these guys in pace. And I think this is going to reduce their numbers pretty quickly. Uh, when it comes to it, you're going to start to see kind of the uh, the evil faction get above that two 2,000 unit mark. We have a lot more infantry uh, getting you know, thrown up as well. The siege towers are being brought further and further forward. It doesn't seem like yeah, there's no cavalry around here now. This is the only unit of horses left. So it might not be a bad idea to actually bring these contingents of spearmen that you have over here. I mean, granted, they are just like, you know, spear lurkers. They're not exactly very good when it comes to fighting. You could definitely bring up these two units of infantry, maybe, and just start to fully commit and blockade yourself inside the city. Because now, what you can do is you can just sit inside of the city itself and use the choke points as kind of a way to defend yourself against any rear charges that might come in. And there we go, another unit of, uh, of uh, infantry getting out of ammunition, or I guess spearmen getting out of ammunition. So the number-wise, yeah, they're, they're really going to suffer. Actually, no, these guys aren't out of ammunition yet. They're just mounting the walls, but, you know, they're, they're, the arrows and the spears are running out for the defenders. And their archers are being broken down pretty heavily. I mean, Isengard, I'd say, at this point, are pretty much spent besides a couple of units of elite infantry. So it's going to be up to the goblins now to really break through. Hopefully, these guys don't get focused down as well, because I always love to see the white hand sappers come in. Obviously, they have to try and clear out this position first, but, you know, just one white hand sapper on this wall, uh, it's going to destroy, like, all of it and kill so many men around him. They're supposed to be, like, really devastating. But obviously, actually breaking through this position is also going to be another thing, right? Because you have so many archers, so many defenders just keeping this part of the wall very protected. And preventing the sappers from getting close enough to be able to detonate their charges. How well are these javelins doing? Are they out of ammunition yet? So they've still got half their fire left. They've managed to kill 85. That's not bad, honestly. It's a great way of breaking up a lot of infantry. Another artillery shot coming in. Oh my god, this uh, little village uh, hot here saved this unit of pikemen. My god, yeah, another one comes flying in. They're just going to cower beneath this hut uh, and try and keep themselves protected as the artillery continues to fire off rounds. The battering ram is continuing to move forward. Obviously, it's going to have to hold its horses pretty soon, I, I would say. And now, yeah, more and more soldiers are just coming in. There's no ammunition left on these onagers, unfortunately. I mean, I say that. I mean, it really doesn't seem like the, the, the attackers have that many men left, but I guess they do. I mean, the defenders really don't have a lot of men left either. And with the if the White Hand Sappers can come in, I think the Forces of Evil will definitely have a great chance of winning this battle. But if they get held in this outer position, I think they're really going to struggle. Even though they only really have, what, one, two units of arrows left. So we're going to have to see as the Goblins continue to push forward this uh, position right now. Um, I mean, obviously, this is the perfect unit to push forward this battering ram. Just a unit of goblin raiders. We have seen so many goblin raiders in this battle just throw their lives away. And they're just getting shot literally from both sides. But this is perfect, right? You'd much rather the goblin raiders take all the arrow fire than, say, your heavy goblin infantry or your urukai. Kind of, kind of a position of goblin raiders pushing forward as well. Very poor, poorly equipped, just tiny like buckle shield and a blade maybe a mace here and there I think that's going to be where the, the position comes this will also absorb maybe a bit of ammunition as well as it comes in can't believe the Onaga crew have stayed around this long as well they've done a pretty decent job of just chilling here so all they need to do is break through what a unit of infantry uh, the javelins over here are out of ammunition now these archers are very closely going to be out of ammunition and then they're kind of like, they're kind of like almost free. The sappers can come up, blow up the walls, and then all of this comes flying through. Because if you blow up both, both parts of these walls, you'll be able to really put pressure on and then obviously also take down the gate as well. That will be deadly. Obviously, it'd be pretty cool to blow up the walls when, when there's archers and other infantry on it, but I don't think that's going to quite be able to, to achieve that. More men are going to be needed. I mean, this is an absolute bloodbath at the gatehouse.
Yeah, this is a, not going to be an easy task indeed, breaking through this position. But obviously, more and more men are going to be sent for. We've got a bathroom ram. Oh, here we go. They are committing. They are being eager. Are they going to just try and blow this area up? They could do. They could just try and blow themselves up. Or they... Oh, I think they're going for this part of the wall, right? I think they're going for this part of the wall. Legolas, bring them down. Oh my god, they're going for it. Let's get on board with them. They are. They're going for this clump of the wall. The archers aren't up there yet. Quickly, form up archers. Bring them down. Bring them down. Go, 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 go. Are they going? No, I think they have... Oh, come on, commit. Yeah? No? Can we get... I don't know if they can get up there. I think they're trying their best, but it's being a little bit annoying. Maybe not. Maybe they're not committing. Oh, come on. You guys can do it. I think they're trying to, like, get them up there, but they're having a few issues with just pathfinding. Yeah, maybe just going to pull them back and try and do it. Oh, please get up here. I'm not sure. Maybe you can't even get up here. I mean, either way, because I can't imagine the players would bring these guys forward unless they were going to commit them, because this is just a sponge for arrow fire right now. So I imagine they're having some issues maybe with pathfinding, but please just charge in and blow up this part of the wall. That'd be so epic. We'll make sure we stick around here so we can watch it. Because more arrows are being thrown over it. Like, more archers are being committed, so... And obviously, these archers, if they see it, can quickly come over here as well. We've also got a, uh, a siege tower as well. Can they get a siege tower up on this corner? That'd be pretty interesting if they can. The javelins are being brought back, and yeah, the defenders are basically just falling back now at this point. I mean, the siege tower should just break through. Yeah, what is this unit of sappers doing? Is this going to, like, blow up this area? It might be. It might be just looking to blow up this unit of, uh, of infantry. Hopefully not, though, because I feel like that would be kind of a waste. Especially now that they're being focused down by missiles as well. It probably also blow up this battering ram. Yeah, these sappers just don't seem like... They're being pulled out now. I think they're just having some issues with pathfinding. The siege tower has been brought up. I imagine to kind of maybe try and help them out a little bit. Yeah, the sappers are being focused pretty heavily now. More of the goblin archers, though, have been thrown forward to help out with this position. More infantry being committed as well. So we're going to try and break this up as much as possible. And there's still a nice rear guard to be committed. Like, a lot of reserves are still waiting to be thrown forward. And for now, the battle right here is going to wade on. I'm probably going to skip ahead a little bit more now until this battle is kind of a little bit closer to being done because I think it's going to be a, a little while and we don't want to just watch the same choke point over and over again, I don't think. So let's, uh, let's jump ahead a little bit more until this is softened up and I guess they're kind of ready to assault the walls. The fighting is still hectic on the front lines. Luckily, the forces of evil have managed to get through one unit of, uh, of a siege tower right here. They're also just trying to rush through their sappers uh, trying to break them through. I mean, if anyone gets through, one of them did get through, I guess, to try and blow up this piece of a wall. I'm not sure if one's going to be enough to actually do it, but let's see if it's capable of doing it. Here we go. They're setting the explosion. Are they going to do it? Are they going to explode? I'm not sure if one's enough to actually blow up this entire section of the wall. It might do some good damage to it, but that could literally be it. I think that is the case. I don't think they have any ammunition now. I think you need the entire unit to actually make a breach. There's only 6% damage on this wall now. We'll obviously keep an eye on that. But yeah, as you can see, the goblins have been completely broken just from this one unit of, uh, of Dalian swordsmen who have kind of been the, uh, the stone guard for the defenders right now. They did manage to get one unit of their, uh, their berserkers up on the wall, which is great. But they are fighting Vineland Guard. Which is a super heavy infantry variant for Dale. So even though these Berserkers have managed to get up here, they're, they're also obviously struggling a bit. They do also have one unit of their Sappers left, uh, which they need to commit. They just need to quickly break up this last unit of, of Dalian Swords, and then they can really just blow up any part of the wall they want. Balance of power-wise as well, it's still looking pretty good for them, but numbers-wise, it's not necessarily looking as great. There's only a 500-man advantage now for the evil side, and... Yeah, they're slowly starting to run out of men. So unless they can make a big breach pretty soon, I think they're going to struggle. Got a unit of goblin heavy warriors in a shield wall formation. Taking a couple of volleys up there. I can't imagine the defenders have much in the way of ammunition left. I think this is going to be their last couple volleys. And then once that's all taken care of, uh, yeah, it'll be much easier. Yeah, so we have, what, one, two, literally two units of archers left remaining. 
um, and maybe this kind of a couple volleys here as well. So they are really running low on ammunition. But again, there's not really that many evil units left. So maybe they have just done enough. You even got the uh, general unit as well. A unit of White Hand Storm is trying to break through this position. Because, yeah, all they need to do is kill this unit and they can bring up their sappers, blow up a large portion of, portion of the wall, and then move on. I mean, realistically, all they need to do is just clear out, like, a small section of these defenders so they can slip through the, the sappers. I mean, honestly, maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to bring up the sappers and try and, like, thread the needle through this gap, right? And then bring them around because there is a gap here, right? Um, I don't think so much on this side, but... But that's definitely something they could try and do, and I think that's maybe what they're exactly going to do. I always love it when I say something, I was like, oh, players should totally do this, and then they actually do it. It's always great to see that. Um, we'll have to see, though, um, because, yeah, they need to, they kind of need something big to come into play um, if, they're, if they're planning on, on really taking these guys out. Obviously, forming, like, a really thin column would be very important for them. Yep, yeah, is that exactly what they're doing, or are they just going to fall back now? I think they're falling back, just going to stay in and try and wait until they can just cut their way through because there isn't exactly a huge gap here. Or maybe they are just going to go in I and mean, they're going very thin right now. Yeah, I think they're going to try and just squeeze their way through because as long as the majority of them get through, I think the unit is still pretty effective. I think you need at least like half of them to try and get through this. Oh, I don't know though. It's going to be pretty deadly to try and pull through. Actually, I think they're going to get caught there. Oh, that sucks if not. Okay, quite a few of them did get through. More of them are pushing forward. That's, that's probably enough of them, right? It's like the entire unit now. Okay, let's see what's going to happen. Blow up these goddamn walls. Because you should also kill a, a decent portion of their unit. Maybe they're going to try and blow up this part of the wall. Because there's more people here. I mean, any side would be great. There's also one, uh, one Urukai sapper right there trying to break through. Okay, this part of the wall, let's go. We're going to see a big explosion. We should, right? Wait, what happened? Oh, there we go. But the walls didn't blow up. There we go. That's what I wanted to see. You also killed a decent portion of the Gondor. Oh, yeah, she only knocked down a decent portion of their units. That's what we wanted to see. As you can see, like the animation's a little bit weird here and there. But for the most part, it is epic, so... Breaking through that is going to be huge if they can advance forward more men. Uh, they have the men to send. A lot of these Dalian swords are basically dealt with now. So this is going to be like the last push. The last couple of siege towers being brought up. It's not like the defenders really have a lot of men either. They only have, you know, 2400. And a lot of them are going to be kind of lowly armored archers. So now is the time to push forward with everything. There's somehow a unit of, uh, of cavalry still causing some issues in the back. I think we completely missed this unit outflanking. They're still just causing a nuisance more than anything else. And finally, this unit is going to be broken down. So more siege towers being brought forward. The last kind of infantry remnants being brought up. These javelins are going to be so useful to stay uh, to, to use towards the end of this battle. So it is imperative that they keep these guys alive. And don't let any cavalry charges come in on these dudes. Because the, these javelins will mince through a lot of the defensive positions. And just make it a lot easier. Because there's no real missiles to kind of prevent that from being out, you know like prevent it there's a handful of archers left and that's about it especially if they can get some of their siege towers up here you know get this siege tower to start attacking these archers getting your men to start clearing the rest of these walls we've got two units of infantry gonna come and try and smash down this gate in the rear so yeah they're gonna put a lot of pressure now as this outer defense now we get the inner position now siege tower going down White Hand Stormers looking to try and breach the walls themselves against the Gondorian Sword Infantry. We're definitely going to have an explosive end to this battle. As both sides commit their last remaining units. I do really like as well how the, they've kind of got their archers up here as well. Trying to, uh, yeah, trying to defend this breach as best as they can. Does look pretty cool. The battering ram's even going up as well. So yeah, the attackers are looking to try and stretch them as far as they possibly can. The goblins have quite easily taken this out though. And they're, they're killing a lot of this town watch here. Well, not even town watch. These are rivermen. So these are the, the javelins who have out of ammunition. So 
Yeah, plenty more men are coming in. They're going to leave themselves kind of vulnerable here, but, you know, I'm sure it's fine. So they can commit. The battering ram is now up as well. And I assume, you know, she'll be going up on this wall very soon as well. Even though these archers are, like, in the perfect position to shoot them as soon as they come over that, uh, that siege tower. A couple arrows will be finding their marks, I'm sure. The Fountain Guard have actually been committed to the fight as well. And the Fountain Guard are actually pretty decent now. Previously, they weren't that great. But now they are actually pretty good. The gates have gone down as well. So you're just going to be getting an assault. Basically, this is going to be the last push of the forces of the cavalry still somehow causing an issue. So I imagine all of this is just going to get committed now to the fight. One last massive push to try and break up the defenders. And this is kind of good as well. You have some these goblin heavy warriors. I guess they are kind of annoying. Yeah, that archer fire is going to be brutal. They are going to look to just try and like hack down the gate, but I'm not sure how much protection this uh, this tower. Like, I'm not sure how many arrows can actually hit into these units now. Oh, a lot of them. Basically, all the arrows can find their mark now. Yeah, I doubt this gate is going to go down. The gate's actually opening. I mean, these units are just so dead. But I guess they're a brilliant sponge, so it's not too bad. A unit of a uh, white knights of a white tree though being committed. Obviously, an elite unit right there. With all the arrow fire as well, there is no way these guys are going to break through. But they, they kind of take up the last of the ammunition, which is probably pretty decent. A lot of elite units are being brought up to this fight as well, up on the walls. You've got the Dalian General being committed. So they are very serious about keeping these. This cavalry somehow is still alive. Only 170 kills on that one. They're actually wasting a javelin throw on them. I guess it's not that bad. But I imagine these javelins are going to be very useful. So we don't want to kind of waste too many of them. But as you can see, the last couple men are being brought up. Just one final push as they commit everything they have. And they've, they've got a lot of soldiers left. Like They've left a lot of these good units back in reserve. So it's going to be one good final push. And all it takes is like a, a one breach you know, anywhere. Whether it's up on this left hand side, but right over here at the gate. And they get themselves inside. There's only like a ha there's only archers really left remaining, you know. Oh, we have a unit of Uruk Pikes being thrown up here as well. But unfortunately, I think the archers over here from Gondor are going to be able to start shooting these guys in the back. Would not obviously be a great idea if they could get a unit of archers up here um, or a unit of infantry up that siege tower. They're going to be using their javelins as well to hit at the uh, at the Gondorians. It's the Gondorians are actually going to fall back a little bit, trying to save their elite infantry. That is going to allow Isengard to obviously breach their way through this position. I definitely rate the fact that they're trying to protect their Fountain Guard, but it's kind of giving Isengard, Isengard a position to get out of arrow fire and also, you know, get over the walls. But they've kind of set up a nice little outflank here as well if they wanted to. Obviously charging down this street and then coming up behind the Urukai as the Pike Battle does fiercely start, but a lot of arrow fire onto the Urix as they try and push down. They don't really know what they're up to right now. The attackers are making good progress at the gate, but I think, again, they're just going to kind of end up running out of steam. Just not having the quality or the quantity to really break through. But yeah, I guess this is going to be them now. Just fully committed everything. Yeah, these guys have been broken pretty nicely by the rest of the infantry. Last couple shots going out. And this is going to be the last part of the battle. Goblins have now committed everything they have left in reserve. This will be the final push of the battle. And I just don't think it will be enough. They have tried every single position to break through. But as you can see, the Fountain Guard are bravely holding on as the goblins push forward. The towers are pounding down on their position. And the gate is still remaining solid. I and mean, there's plenty more Gondorians to be committed to the battle so even though, even though this valiant assault has gone on i just don't think it'll be enough and honestly i think it comes back down to the beginning of the battle when they lost a large portion of their archers to that cavalry charge you know losing a thousand units at the beginning of the battle is just so brutal and i can really dictate how the rest of the battle does go if they would have had the archers maybe they could have cleared through the streets a lot quicker maybe if they had the archers they could have put a lot more pressure inside before 
But losing, you know, half your archer force that early on is, yeah, is devastating. And it's definitely proven it's, uh, you know, it's proven it's worth to try and cause some issues on the front lines if you can whilst they, they you know, push forward. Because the attackers kind of almost have to play defensive at that point. But right now they are just coming in for the killing blow. Up on the walls as well, it seems like they're having a nice time of it. The Vineland Guard almost surrounding these Goblin Heavy Infantrymen. That one guy, though, is uh, fighting off many of his uh, many foes, though. He's got a body now, so two of them against three Goblin Heavy Infantrymen. I imagine the Vineland Guard will be able to dispatch these Orcs or Goblins like they're nothing. But we'll have to see. Maybe they can take them down. The guy's been left alone now. Still not taking down one of them as he continues to fight on. Well, as you can see down there, basically all of them goblins have been taken out. Fountain Guard, how many kills have they got now? Yeah, not too bad. 230, but they've also held pretty firm. And there you go. A big mass route kind of occurring towards the end of this battle. There's not really going to be anything left, uh, like, standing at the end of this. Only probably the Goblin General is maybe going to stick around. You've got a unit of Goblin Heavy Warriors very close to breaking. Uh, so a very, very good show by the players. If you take a look at the devastation of the battlefield as well, you can really see, obviously, that the huge cavalry charge here was massive, breaking a lot of the archers. There were some big battles. You know, down each of these streets, you can really tell that a battle was held. I mean, just look at this. It was one path, man. It was bloody as ever, especially down here as well. This was a very brutal street. I mean, basically every street was pretty brutal. Uh, you can see bodies just littering the cities. Uh, pay, you know, pavement pretty up, heavily. This was kind of the lightest fighted area for sure. There wasn't really too much going on in the center. And on the left hand side, the goblins threw wave after wave. I mean, look at the amount of bodies uh, right here. The goblins threw wave after wave against their foe. Finally using their numbers and breaking through. But they took a lot of casualties whilst doing that. Obviously leading up here. Uh, it was such a shame as well. They, they couldn't quite use that second sapper unit. Because imagine if they could have blown up this part of the wall um, alongside it and attacked from multiple sides. They could have done a good job. But even though it does seem like the defenders do still have the fountain guard in reserve as well. So they still had another unit of fountain guard to block this passage if they needed to. So even though this was an extremely close battle, I think the defenders did manage to hold on. And yeah, if, the, if maybe the attackers could have held on to their archers, killed these fountain guards, they could have broken through. Because it's not like they have that many men left. Um, and you know, maybe a handful of archers could have been the ones to do the final blow uh, and, and win the day. But there you go. That's going to be the battle for today. If you guys enjoyed it, be sure to drop a like and a comment down below. I really, really appreciate all the love on these on these episodes and on these battles. It's always fun doing an epic, like, large-scale battle like that. Also, a massive thank you to all the guys who played in this engagement. I really appreciate it. Make sure you keep the replays coming because they are awesome. Um, and you guys can just quite take a quick look right there to see the kills. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.